This is a sad the blog of my longtime friend going back to Bernhardt Junior High, Richard Lieberman. And Richard here it says Berkeley police made the arrest Monday night at a home near the Berkeley Hills on Indian Rock Avenue. Somerville was arrested by Berkeley police on suspicion of criminal threats. Bad two years ago in Oakland, 12, 30, 21, which nail picture for this video blog. Eh, Richard, eh. that's it. Uh, and he gives a hat tip. So, since he gives a hat tip to the Berkeley Scanner, yeah, he wrote exclusive. If, um, so presumably that means he didn't get the exclusive. And uh, what's her name with the Berkeley Scanner? Did let's find out. We've got. Let's see here, Berkeley. Yeah, there it is, Berkeley Scanner, here. Uh, so let's take a look at the Berkeley Scanner. There she is. Um, let's see who she reports. Uh, Longtime Bay Area news anchor Frank Somerville was arrested Monday evening after a family disturbance at his parents' Berkeley Hills home, according to police and community reports. It's the photo, and um, former anchor Frank Somerville arrested in Berkeley. The Berkeley scam. Oh. When Mark told his brother to leave, he said the two got into a physical altercation, a fight outside the family home. Mark ended up detaining Frank until police arrived. Two community members at the scene. Frank Somerville was arrested on suspicion of criminal threats, battery, public intoxication, and probation violation, Berkeley police said. My lord. What an awful fall. I mean, really an awful fall. The house on Indian Rock Avenue and later attended Berkeley High School. Frank Somerville had an award-winning career spanning 30 years at KTBU. But the former news anchorman also A DUI crash in December 2021 that made headlines around the Bay Area. He had gone out that night craving Taco Bell, but ultimately ran into an Audi, a red light in downtown Oakland, actually on 17th Street, he told KRON earlier this year. The driver got out of the Audi and after the collision, as Somerville continued driving his black Porsche into it, ramming it into a pole. I was close to as comatose as you can be, Somerville said, describing that night. He said his blood alcohol content was 0.24% when he was arrested. 24%. Whew, wow. Earlier that year, there was an editorial disagreement about how to cover the disappearance of Gabby Petito. KTVU has not confirmed his account. They didn't deny it either. Somerville sat substance and alcohol abuse as well as I had hoped to get back into the anchor chair one day. The story will be updated with additional information as it becomes available. Uh, geez, Louise. Very sad, very sad, very sad news for uh, you know, a man I had hoped and really had and have high hopes for a positive future, I thought when he was first let go of KTVU that in a way of saying, you know, I'll show you he'd run for mayor. Why not? Uh, the field was wide open. He had 30 years. And um, I thought if he played his cards right, he could make a great go of it. But I think it was a combination of age 
and when you get older, it's harder to maintain the habits you had when you were younger, particularly drinking. And Frank's generation, Frank and I are roughly the same generation. And we grew up at the time when such things as a cattle drinking song were popular and learned. And you met your significant Everybody knew where the places to go uh, to meet eligible Francisco, and you went there, right? And this has been the, a staple of California professional life, let alone American professional life, but in particular California for a lot of, for a long time. The first night of one, my first night in Winter Stars Oscar party in Beverly Hills in 2010, and we were at the Polo Lounge afterward and met a there, but he said it's okay. The Berkeley police know how to get me home. Um, to make you effectively stop. And I know for me, I remember when I was in the mayor of San Francisco, this was 1999, was, had agreed, that's what he led me to believe, had agreed to put, put their blank bank of hotels into our bid. rooms and I I'm sorry not, not 60 more than that it was like uh, I think 55,000 uh, but at any rate um, Harry's south side and had a great dinner and then I merchants in Oakland and along the way I didn't go out to get drunk you know, I, I never went out and said, I'm going to get drunk. But it was, it was a curious mixture of cocktail and I left merchants and I fell asleep at the wheel. And when I woke up, I was headed the wrong way, up a freeway ramp, up right across the street from North County Jail. And uh, in front of me, uh, I wasn't hurt. I called the police that came. I told them who I was because I worked for the mayor uh, and I was working on the Super Bowl. Uh, and, and technically, I didn't work for the mayor. I was actually, this was after Elihu. Uh, I was transferred over to economic development. And I started the Super Bowl effort from scratch. So they took me to the hospital, blew through my blood, then took me back to uh, the North County Jail, and I was there for grand tents. You're Mr. Super Bowl. Don't worry, I'm going to get you out of jail. He said it just like that. And that's exactly what he did. So, I offered to resign. I went to Robert Bob the next day. And, actually, in two days, yeah, that next day. That later that, that that morning, and he uh, he didn't take mine. I had my make sure you have people around. Right? Right. Um, um, but I had you sign with, but I had you sign with. I started working out like out of nobody's business, and you think you're you know over it, right? Or the things that happen, and so I would go out and. Then these weird things happened in 2006 where you take someone else home who's obviously drunk, as I did, and then I'm going across the Bay Bridge, about to turn onto the ramp. And this is when the Bay Bridge was being rebuilt. When you Normally you'd look over to the left and you could see the oncoming cars, right? Off coming onto off Bryant Street. In this particular occasion, I turned and it was like Godzilla taking out the bridge. It was nothing but air. I went, 
Oh, and I stopped. Ran into this car in front of me. It was only doing eight miles per hour. So I got out, checked. There was no damage to my car, no damage to the by fellow in front of me with the Jeep. Actually, it was a little nick from my car. There's nothing on his. But we both mutually agreed to call the police. Police, San Francisco police come. Breathalyze me, come up zero. Breathalyze me again, zero. Then a third time, and the passing says, come on, cough it up. I mean, hard. And then I did, and he goes, aha, okay, now you're over. Seriously? So, got that one reduced to what was called a wet reckless. I should be dismissed. In fact, Jeff Adachi, who is the, uh, rest in peace, my friend who is San Francisco for Public Defense, because that was wrong. Um, and then headed back from the Balboa Cafe. And for reasons best known to the person I studied, it was over here doing all this, right? Hey, 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 pointing at this dude. So I get in front of them, right? The guy goes past me. I'm doing maybe 68. That guy is hauling it. They didn't go out what was going on. I, ch I just casually changed lanes one and they came went over with me. But they decided to make a beat on me. So when we got off the bridge, they did their lights. I pulled over. I told them what happened. Hands in the air. Says, don't worry, this is not going to take long. I'm thinking they're going to let me go or breathalyze me. They breathalyze me. And he claimed that was over the limit. And I wasn't even drunk. Okay. Um, it turned out I wasn't. But what happened was he had my hands up and I just, I couldn't believe what was happening because no one wants to be arrested. So my tears are starting to flow. And he goes, oh, you're going to do that, huh? And he picks me up and he body slams me on the hood of his squad car. Yep, that's what he did. So my attorney was Bill Dubois. And if you're thinking, should I know that name? He was the attorney in the famous Hans Reeser case, a friend of mine. So Bill had, them, had that reduced from a DUI. When things like that happen to you, they test you, okay? And you say, hey, all right, and then nothing happens. And so, um, and then sometimes your metabolism changes over time and you just have to know when to stop. And that's certainly what happened to me. I remember the last time I really had a mixed cocktail, because sometimes you go to in the Bay Area and something, you know, it goes, oh, no, I would never do that. Unfortunately, Dave Biddle died um, in a boating accident. Some people say he took his own life. Um, anyway, on this New Year's Day of 2010, I worked out four hours. I had went out the night before my buddy Dino, went to the Balboa Cafe. Uh, I believe I have video from that. And um, then I remember going home. I had, I went, I, after I worked out four hours, I went out. It was New Year's Day. I did the bus stop thing. Bus stop's a great legendary bar on the corner of Luguna and Union. And I had shots and I had, you know, not much. But what I didn't realize was I worked out didn't eat and no water that I dehydrated my body. And so on the way home, I was in the hospital. Um, no, no, nothing criminal, nothing involved like that. A very kind little woman who worked for Pixar, who's a friend of mine to this day, uh, found me and um, made her just we get in the hospital. Going to stop. And in his case, he was like, you know, 
like, oh, you know, DUI, maybe, okay. Or maybe he worked out hard, right? Like in my case, in 2010, my blood alcohol was about almost where his was. Um, and uh, and I'm, I, was, I was just like, how did that happen? But well, I worked out like a blankety blank that morning because I was trying to, you know, New Year's resolution, get stronger, lose weight, and I'm already going to the gym every day anyway, right? So I'm doing the bench presses and the leg presses, and I started doing the um, deadlift. I think it's just whatever's going on with his personal life, because it doesn't seem like there's a woman involved. Uh, I know he's got a great relationship with his daughter. On air, and this guy was the face in the Bay Area. Frank Somerville was, it got to a point where he was, you know, Mr. Everybody, Mr. Somebody, Mr. Mr. You Want to Know This Guy, and very nice person. Um, so that's what makes this so doubly difficult because Frank, from my experience and those of others, is not a person who's so mean where you, you wish ill upon him. If you're a God-fearing person, you don't wish ill upon anybody anyway, okay? Um, yeah. um, and I hope he does that this time. I really do. I hope he did that the other time. But it's just, it's sad news. But I'm saying to you, if you're going to go out and cocktail, all right? Also, don't go by yourself. Go with friends. Uh, don't. I don't. That's the strongest I've ever did. I've never done. I'm ne yeah, 25 years ago. Yeah, 25 years ago. That's it. I. I. I never wanted to be mentally out of control. I always wanted to have my faculties and I never went out to get drunk. My idea of going out was you go to a bar to meet a woman. You know, you're, you're like, hey, this lady is the one and she thinks that you're going to be her husband and all that stuff, right? That was the way it was done. This was before apps and, and everything else and smartphones. It was before the now, it was a lot better. Because you knew who you were meeting. You weren't having an encounter with somebody that you met in an app who uh, had photographs and presentations who were not them. Uh, it's ridiculous. If you're going to meet somebody, do it in person. Um, then you'll get to know them. And Anyway, um, I hope Frank gets through this. I really do. And I, uh, whatever happened that caused him to go to his folks' house and get into an altercation with a fight with his brother and then threaten his father, who's 91, poor man. And my mom is 88, be 89, October 1st. Um, she's all I got. I hope Frank realizes his family's all he's got. All right. Uh, subscribe to Zenny62, bookmark Oakland News Now blog .com, and God bless you, Frank. God bless you.